Okay, so uh, today we will start with the section, oh, sorry, with the past paper from May, June 21. Paper four, first variant, that is the theory paper. And let's see uh, what they are asking in the first question from this paper. The very first question is the sky cover of mass 76 kg, so mass is given. It's falling vertically in still air at time t is equals to zero. The skydiver opens his parachute. So basically at a zero second, our case starts from the opening of the parachute. So you can observe from the graph also that your graph is just like the half part of the free fall motion when the parachute actually opens, right? So speed time graph is mentioned over there from time t is equals to zero till time is equals to six seconds. The first thing they are asking using figure 1.1 determine the deceleration of the skydiver immediately after the parachutes open. So you have to calculate the deceleration immediately after the parachute opens. So the values are in front of you. So which the deceleration? Sir, the answer will be negative. Uh, your answer will be negative, yes, because uh, we are finding deceleration and your speed is decreasing. So definitely your answer will be Basically, we are doing uh, the first question of the paper. And this is the first question in which we have to calculate the deceleration. And graph is given in front of you. So we have to find out the deceleration of the skydiver immediately after the parachute opens. So uh, which value or from the graph, which values you choose to find out the deceleration? Variant. Yes, you have to use the gradient concept, but uh, what will be the values that we use to find out the final answer? Final value. We have to, we have to form a straight line between two points. Okay. Uh, if yeah, you remember, you... yes, if you remember, we discussed if you want to find out any gradient from the curve line. So we have to first mark a straight line, right? And then we have to uh, find out the gradient, okay? So basically, uh, when your parachutes open or uh, in the earlier stage, let's suppose if we only consider the first second when the parachute opens. So this is the speed uh, at which the parachute or the body is moving after one second after opening the parachute. So one answer I got in the chat is V minus U, that is 26 minus 58 divided by one. So one I answer I got in the chat is, and the values taken from the graph is 26 minus 58. So basically, uh, in this calculation, this will be our final, oh, sorry, this will be our initial speed. And the final will be twenty-six. So twenty-six minus fifty-eight divided by one. So that will be your final answer equals to any confusion in that? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. 
so uh, basically they are asking immediately so it means you can take the values for the first second and then simply apply on deceleration so your answer will be and it is not compulsory to write answer in negative because we already know that deceleration yes, will sir, negative negative yes. deceleration and deceleration right yes so basically minus sign is only to uh, show in the calculation right because we are getting minus in calculation but in your final answer you don't need to write any minus sign because already it is understood that deceleration will always be in negative sign okay and the next thing they are asking the force due to air resistance acting on the skydiver immediately after the parachute opens so the formula will be f equals to f equals to ma very good because we know mass is already given and acceleration we calculate Seventy six. So seventy six multiplied by thirty two two four three two Newton. Two four three two Newton, right? And mostly you know that we have to round off the value. So if you round off this value, so your final answer will be equals to. Twenty four hundred newtons, right? Okay. Actually, sir, can you show the mark scheme for the first question? Okay, I will also show the marking scheme. Can you do that? Okay. So, ah, uh, basically, this is the value of the force that we are getting from the value of acceleration from the graph. Okay. But uh, one more thing that we have to do in this question that will be better for it, that if you just draw a gradient line for the first part, like this, because there is a curve in the graph initially. You can see your graph is like a curve one, okay. So Sir, for uh, we did this paper in school, and my answer is coming out as forty meter per second squared. Yeah. So basically, ah, uh, when we are working with the curve, so always remember that we have to make a straight line to find out the gradient, right? Like the tangent line. Yeah. So basically, that tangent line will help you to ah uh, find out your exact value for your gradient. Okay. Because there is a curve. Actually, Mister, I have a question. Hmm? Since. Since the question says immediately, mm. sorry, my I must have the line. Can't we just use like for example, fifty eight and then fifty? Ah, uh, you can also use then that. This this line is straight, right? And then it starts curving from here onwards. So you may also. But this part is straight. Close values, yes. So if there is a straight line after immediately, so you may use that value. Otherwise, you may take a. Yeah, because pattern. what I did was fifty eight minus fifty over zero point two. Okay, so basically, uh, till one second, it is a long period because in a very short interval of time, you can see it will uh, like constant at three second, like the third second after opening. Yeah. The so that's why it is better to use the gradient, like uh, the tangent to the curve or second. You may just choose the values when your line. But can you use the straight point one. because till here I think the graph is straight, right? Uh. Yes, we can use this part also, but it is better to choose the initial values because they are saying immediately, right? Okay, so if so fifty eight and fifty, for example. Yes, if we use that value, because in this type of question we will find a uh, like variation in the answers also. Yeah. So we can do the marking. Yes, we will also do the marking. Because and we are taking time period. Because also change the answer for um two four. Yes. Yeah, and what uh will be the answer you are getting from fifty minus fifty eight? Forty, forty. Oh, that okay. Fair. Minus eight over zero point two, minus forty.
and with 40 multiplied by 76 uh for let's 30 40 I think we should write it, write it as 3000, right? Two significant yeah. figures. So 3040 will be your answer. And if we round off the value, so that will be equals to 3000. 3000. Yeah. So if we check in the marking scheme. So is your screen stuck? Yes. So okay, basically, no, complete this one. So this will be 30, 40. Yeah, because it's a very big difference. That's why. So I went to another range. In your marking scheme, your answer is... 35 to 43. Yes, so 35 okay. to 43. There are a different variation of the answer. So starting from 35, any values will be acceptable between 35 to 43, right? So actually we yeah. got 40, so that is also acceptable, right? And they are also using yeah. the same value from the graph. So according to that, their answer is 3,800. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Yes, because it depends upon the value of acceleration that would yeah. uh, value of acceleration they are using in second part, okay? But the important thing is try to find out the straight line in the curve or secondly, if you are not yeah. uh, able to do that, then draw a gradient. That, just simply draw a gradient tangent line to the curve yeah. and take the points of any point on the two sides of that tangent. And in terms of the forces acting on the skydiver, his motion between time t is equals to zero and time t is equals to six seconds. So in terms of forces, we have to explain between time t is equal Six. They are asking about the whole thing, and you already know about this situation when we open up the parachute. So, what actually happens over there? When you just open up the parachute, so what happened over there? You have to answer in the terms of forces. So, this is about terminal velocity, right? Uh, yes, but still, uh, in the first, they are asking in terms of forces. So basically, yeah, yeah. So as the skydiver begins to fall, the only force acting on him is weight. As as he begins to catch speed, air resistance increases. Uh, but and then eventually, air resistance. We only started from the situation uh, when the parachute opens because you can see at time t is equals to zero. Parachute opens. Right? Oh yeah, okay. We have to just write the half part of the statement, right? That when we open up the parachute, so you resistance will be greater than the weight. Okay. It is in it is it's in air resistance balances out the weight, the acceleration decreases, and the skydiver reaches terminal velocity. Yes. So when we open up the parachute, okay. I'm writing in the key points because you already know the statement. So air resistance will be greater than the weight. And secondly, uh, when your air resistance is greater than the weight, so definitely your speed will decrease, right? And when your speed decreases, so definitely there will be a value of acceleration also. In after some time, we try to balance the air resistance. And when we balance the air resistance, so your speed will become constant. acceleration will be equals to zero. That means minimal velocity, right? And the last part is explained why opening the parachute cannot reduce the speed of the skydiver to zero. Wait, so I have a question. Yes. My answer was uh, air resistance increases and then balances out the weight the acceleration decreases and the skydiver reaches terminal velocity. Okay. Is that correct? Uh yes, that's also correct. Because you said because you said here air resistance is greater than the weight. Uh, initially, because uh, when we open up the parachute, so definitely your air resistance will be greater at that point, right? 
or you can say that upward force will be greater than the downward force okay so that is the only concept if you check your marking scheme so you will also find that concept deceleration because upward force greater than weight or upward resultant force right so there are different names to write in your answer either you are writing with the reference of the resultant force upward force air resistance so all points are given in your marking scheme right so all key points yeah. are in our answer right we just need to phrase this according to uh, the key points that we written in the paragraph right because we already uh, solve many topicals and we already uh, write statements different time so that's why now it is uh, simple to identify the forces and write the answer and finally if we talk about explain why opening the parachute cannot the speed of the skydiver to zero any idea why speed will not decrease to zero because the forces are balanced forces are balanced like the resultant force is zero okay so yeah, wouldn't the forces be like against each other yes forces yeah, are, uh, opposite to each other so if your forces are still uh because body is still moving free fall from uh, that maximum height to the downward point but if will be in the rest state so then your forces will be balanced and your speed will be equals to zero right yeah so basically a uh, body is still moving in downward direction so it means that air resistance air resistance is acting on the body and body is still covering distance okay this point is also acceptable is still moving right so basically when body is still moving or body uh, is moving in any direction or any force will be greater than the other force so all these things uh, gives you the concept that your speed will not equals to zero right because you yeah. know that for zero speed your body uh, should be at a fixed point uh, the body does not cover any distance at the constant speed or zero speed right sorry in uh, rest state or zero speed okay so first question is for 10 mark uh that was not much very difficult really the first part of the gradient is the different thing from the normal graph second part is related to the impulse that was the first topic that we started in our section so basically if we consider the mass this is 1.2 kg and a second ball of mass 0.52 kg travels horizontally towards the trolley so basically uh, is at rest. So basically, trolley is at rest. So if we consider trolley as mass one, body one, m one, two one. Okay. Initial velocity of the wooden trolley is equals to u one, and mass will be equals to m one. And ball is moving towards or in the direction of the trolley. So this will be your second mass, m two, and it travels horizontally towards the trolley. The ball embeds itself into the wood of trolley. The trolley moves with an initial speed of uh, 0 0.065 meter per second. So this is the speed of the trolley. And they are asking calculate the impulse exerted on the trolley. The impulse, uh, okay, can I do it? Okay. Okay, so impulse is equal to change in momentum mv. Okay. Uh, is equal to 1.2 times 0 0.065. 1 1.2 uh, into 0 0.065. Yeah. Because you know that initial uh, speed of the trolley is zero, right? So definitely the change of the speed will be equal to 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स फाइव ओके सो बेसिकली योर इम्पल्स विल बी इक्वल्स टू मास इन टू वेलोसिटी तो मास इज वन पॉइंट टू Your change in velocity will be equals to zero point zero six five. That will give you the answer of this impulse. And in next part, they are asking the speed of the ball as it hits the trolley. So speed of the ball means initial speed or the final speed. Yes, miss. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, basically, uh, in the first part, you calculated the value of impulse, right? Yeah. And in the second part, they are asking, uh, that what will be the speed of the ball as it hits the trolley? Speed of the ball as it as it hits the trolley. So, since the trolley is at a, is at rest, uh, the momentum of the trolley is equal to the momentum of the ball, right? Okay, so you are saying that the momentum of the trolley will be equal to the momentum of the ball, right? Yeah, because momentum before and after a collision is Is equal to zero in an isolated system. Okay, so any other suggestion? If anyone wants to add something, and what is the answer of your impulse? The impulse zero point zero seven eight. Yeah, same answer. Zero point zero seven eight means zero point zero eight round off, right? Oh yeah, and SI unit kg uh, meter per second. And you are saying that uh, the momentum before collision will be equals to momentum after collision, right? Yeah. Before collision will be equals to after collision. So you are saying that your zero point zero eight. Will be equals to the mass of the ball, right? Because now we are talking about the ball, so we have to take m two, right? Yeah. So your yes. v will be equals to masses. So if you divide these quantities, what will be your final answer? Uh, I didn't use zero point zero eight. I used zero point. Zero seven eight. So, okay. One second. Two. Wait, no, sir. We can't use zero point five two. Okay. What is the reason? Because it it's in grams. Okay. So basically, what you so need first, you need to zero point zero eight times a thousand over zero point five two. So that is the important thing. Yeah. That you have to make the same units because here we are having a value in grams. And in your answer, you calculated the value in because initially the Wait, mass. So, so I have a question. Yes. You got the. No. Use zero point zero eight or zero point zero seven eight. It's up to you. We will also check the marking scheme because in marking scheme they both uh, they use both the concepts. Okay, let's check if we check. My answer, my answer when I did that. I got my answer as one hundred fifty three point eight four. Okay, the answer. Yeah. Of... Okay. So the answer is still one fifty. Yeah. Yes. And you are get getting answer one fifty three, right? Yeah. Okay, so that zero point zero eight multiply one thousand, then you divide zero point five two. I'm not sure. So you are getting answer one fifty three and round off it. Not at all. Two. One hundred fifty-four. I'm not sure. One fifty meter per second. Yeah. Okay. Any confusion? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So uh, the last part of the question is: as the trolley moves. Across the rough surface, it slow down and it stops. Explain in terms of work done the energy change that takes place as the trolley slows down.
so uh, what type of energy you are getting uh, in the trolley when trolley is going to be slow down kinetic energy into thermal energy decrease, decrease in kinetic energy yeah okay so basically your kinetic energy will decrease and that will convert into thermal energy thermal. okay yeah but uh, other because question is for 3 mark so yeah, can i try okay yes uh, as the trolley moves work done against the rough surface causes the kinetic energy to decrease okay the kinetic energy is then converted into thermal energy okay since you uh, just mentioned two important points and there is one more thing that you are very close to it but you are still missing that really yes because uh, only uh, you got the concept right but uh, the specific name of that term you are not mentioning that the for frictional force right because you mentioned that the work done against or work oh, done yeah. in the surface yeah yes. it was friction. so you just need, yes so you just need to mention the name of friction right otherwise you are oh, going work done against the surface yes. work the done friction uh, was yes. the kinetic energy to decrease work done against the friction right so basically can you say uh, due to can you say due to friction uh yes so basically uh, you okay. are doing work right against the friction yeah second you mentioned that your kinetic energy decreases yeah and definitely it will be equals to zero after some time right yeah and the third thing is you mentioned that you are uh, some oh, it, oh it slows oh, down and stops okay 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 to decrease to zero okay i didn't read it so basically uh the final thing is the where your energy is actually converting or where your kinetic energy is going on so you mentioned that your kinetic energy will convert into the thermal energy oh it's is there is there anything as sound energy uh sound energy is not like uh approach there's some waves because yeah, if you because if you rub like yes any surf any material against a rough surface friction causes a sound to be made uh yeah, yes i think it's a vibration so like vibrations will go to your uh your when drums. we are talking about the sound so when we start the section of the uh, waves so then you will get the concept of that how sound waves will produce because in journaly uh, we are taking uh, the daily life examples in different sense right but if we talk about with the scientific uh, examples so then you come to know that when the air molecules vibrate so basically that is the case for air molecules right and uh, for the time being we are only talking about the car or the trolley right uh -huh, okay so basically okay i will check the link also you just share yeah here. wikipedia it says it's a thing but it says sound is just waves yes so that's a uh, mechanical yeah, waves it's basically it is a wave because it vibrates through your ear that's why you can like hear so that's yeah. why uh, we are not writing because uh, you that's a good thing that you are uh, searching for different uh, quantities in a single case but you know that still we are just on the first ordinary level yeah yeah we didn't do we didn't do sound yet okay so that's why you have to answer according to the the level at which we are doing this question that yeah. will be included but for that you have to explain in terms of air molecules also right but in this chapter we only discuss about the solids right we are taking the example of solid bodies we are not talking about uh, that how to calculate the air resistance right we didn't uh, do that that how to calculate air resistance what are the fluid constant what is viscosity so these are the details thing wait sir isn't air resistance always equal to weight or like any forward force uh yes if body is moving with constant speed so definitely it will be equal but if you remember we also discussed the topic of friction that if object is not moving when we apply a little force on that so force frictional force will be greater because you are not able to move that object yeah you are moving that object with constant speed oh uh, so yeah, then you can't calculate it okay okay so that is sir yes 
work is forced into distance, right? So the acceleration is decreasing because of friction, right? So can we write the work done uh, per unit time also decreases? Uh, you may also write that. Okay. Wait, per unit time? Like with time, the work done decreases because the force also decreases. With passage of time. Um, oh, okay. Because it starts to slow down, so it means we are talking with the passage of the time that the work done or the rate of doing work will also decrease. Okay, so right. question and uh, let's see if they are asking about the hydraulic brake or not because hydraulic is not included. Okay, let's see if can explain in terms of molecules why liquids are very difficult to compress. Difficult to compress. Because yes. the liquids are already touching. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they can slide compressed. over each other. And mm -hmm. the distance is not enough to compress them. They flow freely throughout the liquid and like by, uh, bypass each other. Okay. So basically, uh, you got the concept because they are just comparing the difficulty level with the air molecules, right? Because we know solids are rigid. Uh, there is uh, no space between the molecules to compress them. So basically, they are comparing the difficulty level with the air molecules. That why liquids are very difficult to compress. So we are comparing with air, not solid, right? Because aren't the liquids almost incompressible? Yes, almost incompressible, right? Because they are not very far away. So they are all almost very close to each other and their uh, repulsive forces are also greater, right? Right. So they are very close to each other. Secondly, you mentioned that uh, their repulsive forces Wait, so what are these repulsive forces? Uh, repulsive. I've never heard of them. Basically, repulsive force means uh, like when uh, molecules are going to collide with each other, so they will uh, just repel each other uh, in the opposite direction. So that is the repulsive force, right? Because air molecules after are... After collision? Yes, after collision, right? Because air molecules are far away from each other, right? So, oh, so here the molecules are already colliding, so that's why they move. But okay, okay, understood. You can also write that the distance between the molecules are very uh, short as compared to the air molecules, so that's why it is difficult to compress, right? So there are different possibilities to phrase your answer. It's up to you, okay? And next time you check the diagram and all values are given in the question. So is it MGH? Uh, MG. Uh, MG? No, basic. no, no, that's... I think that's wrong. No, no, no. Yeah. Is it the unit there is past go go. So. So basically, you are uh, using the liquid or the solid. The first of the main important thing. Because you have to identify. Hydraulic. Uh, liquid. So basically, in this, the box are pumping oil. So basically, yes, we are using a liquid that is in the form of. Oil. I forgot the formula for liquid. Yes. So that means yeah. we have to use but it's depend upon the situation let's see so basically the values given in the question are the force upward on the piston due to the oil and the force downward on the piston due to the air piston above combines to produce a constant force of basically there are two forces right you are getting one applying downward and one is applying in upward direction because okay. one is so you find the resultant force yes so basically one is applying from the moving oil because it is to push the piston in upward direction and the load which is placed on the piston tries to push that piston in downward direction so right? so this is the weight right this is the weight 
Yes, this is the weight of boxes. Okay. And uh, these forces are managed to produce a constant force of eighty eight hundred. That is our resultant force, right? And secondly, uh, the pressure of the air is given. That is the pressure of atmosphere also. Atmosphere is given, and the cross sectional area of the bottom surface of the piston is also given. So calculate the pressure of the oil at the bottom surface of the piston. Wait, so, so what's the formula? Can you just help me call it? Uh, so basically, if you use the formula for uh, pressure, uh, liquids that, in general. Uh, yes, but that for that formula you need to have certain height, but they are not talking about any certain height. Okay. So oh. if you, uh, so how do we find it? The pressure of the oil at the bottom. Oh surface. wait, pressure is no 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 wait force is equal no, pressure is equal to force over area right? So basically, you have to use that one. The question making the sense in the form that moving oil is moving from right to left. And when it is moving from right to left, so definitely it will move in forward direction to push, uh, push the piston in upward direction. So this is our yeah. Okay. So on this particular okay. area, oil is applying force. So force per unit area will give you the concept of pressure. So that's how we have to use. Force per unit area, right? So your applied force okay. will be equals to 8,800. Divided by area will be equals to 0 0.016. I don't have my calculator. One second. Okay. Oop. 558,000. Uh, 550,000. 550,000. Okay. Right. And you know, we have to write in the uh, scientific notation. Wait, so we can't write it in normal? Uh, you may write that also, but uh, try to write in the scientific notation. So when do we write in, in scientific notation? Uh, in scientific notation, the same concept. Try to write the two significant figures and uh, shift. Yeah, no, but like one, for example, if we had 5,000 or 500, hmm. do we write it in standard form? Uh, yes. Uh, try okay. to write exponent form because that is better that will also give you the concept of two significant figures right and yeah. also will shift into the exponent also right okay so this is the question uh, because in this question this is slightly confusing because it depends upon the statement the statement is important in this question because what they are actually asking that is important because if we just follow the normal procedure so in normal procedure, we can apply a formula according to our choice. Two parts, uh, as the boxes are lifted, the depth of the oil increases. So now we are talking about the case in which boxes are lift and the depth of the oil increases. Explain why the pump must exert an increasing pressure on the oil as the depth of the oil increases. Depth of the oil means you are getting that thing. Depth of the oil when increases. Is the bigger force uh, shift to like the smaller force and then push the boxes up? Uh, yes, that is also possible. But uh, the first thing that we got from the question is they are talking about the depth. Increasing the depth means this piston will move in upward direction. Like if we consider a certain value, certain height. So let's suppose piston shifted towards a new position or new height. So when piston moves uh, towards this point, so definitely the level of the oil will increase in this cylinder, right? So that means your depth will also increase. Okay, this will be your depth. Wait, so can you repeat the definition? So I was answering the previous question. Okay, so basically, uh, when this oil pushes up the piston in upward direction. Wait, can I see the question? Okay, so this is in. All boxes are lifted. Okay, so downward force is lesser now. Yes, so you got the concept okay. of, uh, is uh, lifted. So it means 
piston is actually moving in upper direction, right? Yeah, that's where the oil will be. Yeah, okay. So basically, so uh, the oil. Yes. So Which oil pump? applying uh, the greater force. Oh, that pump. Yes. So if we apply a greater force, so that will definitely push the piston in upper direction, and when you piss. Oh, it's for two marks. Is it? Can you explain it like this? As the depth of the oil increases, its force also increases. And then force and pressure are directly proportional, causing right. the pressure to also increase. Yes. Okay. So basically, we can say that. So the force exerted by the oil will increase and that will lift the piston per direction. So that will lift the piston in upper direction and it means that uh, your upward force will be greater because you are just lifting that boxes in upper direction, right? Yeah. And that will also increase the depth of the oil in the cylinder. So basically that will increase the depth in the cylinder. And what about the last part? Such is one reason why the forces of 8800 Newton in B cannot lift boxes of weight 8800 Newton. So basically if your boxes or the weight of the boxes will be equal to 8,800 Newton. So why your force of 8,800 Newton is not enough to lift those boxes? Uh, atmospheric pressure. Uh, atmospheric pressure, okay, right. The, it will result, the resultant force will be zero. So there will be no like change or anything. They just balance each other. It has to be more. Okay, so basically uh, the weight of the boxes will act in downward direction, right? And one thing you mentioned, uh, the atmospheric pressure, right? So basically uh, when atmospheric pressure applied on the piston, so that will also increase the pressure, right? In downward direction, or that will also add up the force in downward direction. Because in question, they only mention the weight of the box and the force exerted by the pressure, sorry, uh, force exerted by the oil. There is no concept uh, given in the question related to atmospheric pressure, right? So when atmospheric pressure will also apply on the piston, so your downward force will be greater. So you have to do extra work to overcome that downward force, right? So that's why your force must be greater than 8,800 uh, Newton to uh, lift that box in upward direction, right? Because if your forces are balanced, so you know when your forces are balanced, so your body will be in rest state or uh, like with moving with constant speed, right? So if you're, because question is for one mark, so you can simply say that. force must be greater than 8800 newton clear